This consume unit is one of the worst consume units I have ever seen. Now you're just going to make videos on consume unit replacements. They're so boring. There's a million other ones on the internet just like that. This isn't interesting at all. And it's all a load of rubbish. <laughs> Grab a bag and breathe. It's going to be okay. This is actually quite an interesting little video. Let me tell you why. Right, so I bought a house, right? Congratulations, happy days. <laughs> That's such good news, right? Wrong. This house has been a pig. I specifically didn't want to buy a fixer-upper because the last thing I fancy doing when I get home from work at night is doing more work. But guess what? Everything inside of this only two-year-old house is absolutely butchered in. And now I'm finally round to doing the electrical install. This is the reason why I've hardly been putting out videos recently. It's because I've been in here fixing this mess. So yeah, content has been dead recently and I apologize for that. But that's because we found tons of mold in the kitchen in. the plumbing is terrible the electrics are terrible so this house has just been eating up all of my time and mental energy but now we're finally on to the interesting part of the house project which i can start to film which is partially taking my house off grid so we've done loads of off-grid videos but we're not really done a deep dive into the behind the scenes of these systems yet that being the consuming side of things so sit back enjoy let's roll the intro and get into it Right, so this is my consume unit here, which as I mentioned before, is a real disgrace. I don't know whether or not it was left like this by the builder or by the last person who actually lived in this house, but there's no reason for the electrics to be this bad in here. And I've found multiple live cables in different rooms underneath my bathroom sink. I found a live cable just coiled up, stripped back as well. So my plan today is to fix all of this, but more than that, I want to make it a little bit spicier, right? I've got some quite exciting plans for this house involving something called Home Assistant. KNX and partial EPS. Now EPS is a bit like UPS, so it means if the power cuts, you've got a battery which will keep your house running, but a few milliseconds slower, significantly cheaper and easier to install. So I wanna make sure if there's a power cut, my fridge will keep running, my lights will keep running, and my heating will keep running. So there's a few essential circuits that I wanna keep up and running. Everything else, I'm not too worried about. Now the reason why I'm doing that versus a full off-grid board, which I'm perfectly able and capable of doing, I've only got 30 kilowatt hours of battery out there. Let's say a power cut lasts a few days. I don't want things like my tumble dryer to be running emptying out that battery i'll say the power cut happens while i'm not home i want to make sure that only the essential circuits are running and then with a changeover switch i can have my luxury circuits on grid so i'm going to be showing you how to do all of that today and showing you how to test it step one safe isolation we rudely interrupt today's episode to talk about the sponsor for today's video flexi spa if you notice i'm actually sitting on my standing desk that's because this standing desk can handle up to 160 kilograms and yes i weigh less than 160 kilograms it is the best thing i've done for my office in a very long time i hate doing paperwork because i'm not very good at sitting still in case you haven't noticed i very much like to move and be busy so while i'm at my standing desk i can stretch my feet i can do my balance board i can do whatever i need to do also that keypad oh that's a nice keypad i've gone for this beautiful walnut finish check out all the graininess it's so grainy. But also check out the amazing cable management underneath. Now, if you're interested, it comes with a 10 year warranty and a 60 day return guarantee. So thank you so much to FlexiSpot for saving my back, saving my brain, and also for sponsoring this video. So instead of wiring them up in FlexiCon like. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Switch her off, lock her off, lock out, tag out. Now we safe isolate. <laughs> The reason why I'm showing this on the channel is because I didn't realise until recently looking into the demographics how young a lot of my audience is. A lot of it is learners and apprentices and things. There's such an attitude and an opinion in the industry where at least I experienced it and that was that it's cool to work live. It's like you're almost more experienced if you're happy to take risks and work live. But guys, that's not cool. Right, I've had it before where I've switched off breakers and they've still been live and I've got a shock because I've been stupid and I'm not safe isolated properly. So if you're not gonna do it, it's up to you. But if you wanna take your safety seriously and have a slightly longer career, then safe isolate, don't become a statistic. If you're looking for a good quality kit, at the minute they're doing an offer where if you buy their safe isolation kit, you also get a lock off kit. Probes are decent, you see they comply with G38 and they're non-removable, so they're always gonna stay compliant, which is nice. And also, even if the battery dies on this thing, it still works. You can self-test just like that. I think they're great. So now we know we are safe, we're gonna switch everything off and go past the point of no return. 
I put a camera in here not because I necessarily thought we were going to use this footage, but I always wanted to see what the consumer unit sees from my perspective when I'm like, I've got screwdrivers up my nose uh, oh, oh, as I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Oh. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to pay the bills. Yeah. I'm going to take out one circuit at a time. I want to keep all of these devices because there's nothing wrong with them. She'll be coming around. Even is all of this stuff got like way <laughs> what to cry when you're in a board like this? I've been in much worse. I've been in boards like this that are commercial and ten times as big. What you do is you take it circuit by circuit and you don't go cable blind. So we're going to mark off strikes, little tiger stripes on each one. I'm going to correspond them to this. Like even that. Look at the label on this. Last tested in ten years. Next test a year before that. Fantastic. Let's just get all this off and start from scratch because this is killing me. Oh, all right. That is all ripped out and I'm gonna start planning some trunking and some stuff there. But we have a sprinkler system in this house, right? I think it's because we're down such a long driveway. Let me show you. My baddies. My baddies. This one's for all those kids that never got taken to feed drafts at the zoo. Ah, this is a sprinkler system that's part of my house. I have absolutely not got a scooby-doo how this actually works. I mean, I imagine it's a case of there's smoke or heat detected, sends it through to this fire alarm panel, which then triggers an actuator on this pump and poof, the actual practicality of it, how it is wired into my home system, I don't know. Judging by how horrendous some of the other electrics are in this house, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is gonna be one to learn from. But on face value, this looks quite neat and quite nice. Right, okay, that makes sense. Thing is, it's flashing up, there's a fault, and it's been flashing that since I've moved here. This pump here, got all of these relays and controls and things for the sprinkler system, and then we've got this, which looks to me to be some kind of interface between the ICO smoke alarms that we have inside and the system down here. So we've got the interlink, which is gonna go off from our smoke alarms into here, and then it goes down through this FP cable, through these contacts, this I'm guessing is just a controller for the pump. Yeah, look, you can hear. Oh, definitely don't do that again. <laughs> that is the con contactor which is controlling the pump, as I've just confirmed by pushing the button, which is a bit scary because I don't want that to spray water throughout my whole house. Fortunately, I have the valve isolated here and here just in case. That's pretty much straightforward. So that's what that's doing. So now I know what that is doing. I know exactly what the cables are gonna do, which is this so this must be our interlink out to our smoke alarms and then this is our link from our smoke alarms so i just need to make sure that the black wire of the smoke alarm which is a signal cable actually runs all the way through and out to the sprinkler system so next step before i get into any of the fancy off-grid stuff i'm going to pull out some of the cables a little bit higher up so that they're in a better place to dress into the board so much these cables wiggle installed in such a stu stupid way Son of a gun. <laughs> to the Europeans watching this in absolute disgust, we don't wire things in the UK inside of conduit. We just bang them straight in the wall. Now I have done rewires. I've used conduit. That is not the norm. In fact, quite far from the norm. <sighs> oh my days, that was a pig getting that out. She grew a beard in the time it took me to fix this. 
But let me talk you through what it is that I've actually done here. Now there's a reason why I've not focused on the actual wiring of the consumer unit. That's because I value your time. You're coming here, you're giving up either entertainment time, rest time, family time to watch this video. We have this luxurious carpet up here. I've done that because I didn't want to close in the old chase. I had an absolute pig of a time getting these cables out of here. I wanted to bring the cables out up above. I'm going to be installing Home Assistant in this house and some different smart home products. I want to be able to loop them out into relays up here. You'll notice we have three main switches. So we've got grid, that's our main switch from the grid. This is our main switch from battery one and this is our main switch from battery two. What that means is in the event of a power cut, power in the event of a power cut please hold on to your tractor so in the event of a power cut we'll lose these circuits now these are high load circuits that will drain a battery so i don't want these on there but we won't lose these so this is my priority circuits so that is heating lighting and internet everything else is on battery two so i'm going to keep battery one topped up to a minimum percentage of 20 percent at all times this one here slightly lower because it's got less important things on it does that make sense when i refer to what's powering up those main switches we've got this one here which is battery one this is 15 kilowatt hours and that's going to be powering that left main switch this one here battery two this is also 15 kilowatt hours this is also going to be powering that right main switch basically each one of these i'm using their separate eps outputs these are powered up by solar so really those circuits are properly off grid so what that means is we also need to think about something else there's another consideration if you're doing anything that can go off grid is i cannot use the earthing system that comes into my house because the earthing system that comes into my house is a PME earthing system or a TNCS earthing system. Let me show you what that looks like. This is how we tell our earthing system here. So if it was a TNS or terra neutral separated, we would see our earthing wire here coming into the property, going down and onto the sheaf of the cable. Oh, there's a moth there. I didn't even see that guy. As I was saying, if it was TNS, we would see that going down onto the sheaf of the cable, but we don't. We see it going in there to, with the neutral. So we know that this is TNCS or Terra Neutral Combined System. So what I need to do is I need to remove this so that we're not using the TNCS and I need to put an earth rod down there. So I have got the rod here ready to install. So just make sure that if you're gonna use anything that is gonna go off grid, that you've got an earth rod installed to go along with it. Right, so they say pictures paint a thousand words. Let's see how many words a drawing will paint. This software here is called Alec OM. Now, I'm not sponsored, this is not paid for. I, I, I have paid for this software. I got asked specifically on Instagram the other day, how do I make electrical drawings? And I thought, actually, let's make an electrical drawing for this, which also really well explains how my house actually works. We start with our source on Electrical OM. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly bosh together a line diagram for you so that you can see how it actually looks and then I'll share this line diagram on screen so that you can see how it actually works and how it looks. So once we've got our source, add a distribution board onto that. Now let's just for argument's sake do one circuit. So we're going to call this a UPS. So a single phase UPS. There we go. Let's move him over there to tidy him up a little bit. Now this UPS happens to be powered by single phase solar inverter. So let's move him over there. Now this UPS is also powering another single phase distribution board. What you end up with is basically this. Let me make this twice. So we're gonna call that one grid DB. Then we're gonna call these off grid boards, off grid DB1, off grid DB2. There we go, so now we have a rough line drawing. Let me show you that up close. So we have our supply coming down to a grid DB off of that grid DB, we have two MCBs or RCBOs going off to our UPS or our inverter. Now we have solar feeding into this, and then we have coming off of this also our off-grid DBs, or in this case, in the board, we have just our main switches. Right, so now our drawing is finished, I'm gonna pop this on screen and I'm gonna go explain it next to the consumer unit. Now that we're armed with this drawing, I can explain better how all of this is actually gonna work here. If you're wondering the reason why I've gone for Proteus breakers here, it's because at the time of filming this, as far as I'm aware, it's the only bi-directional RCBO that's made, i.e. it will protect you both directions with solar. So we have our supply coming in here. That is our supply coming in, and this is our row of grid breakers. Then we have breaker going out to battery one, via an isolator outside, then a breaker going out to battery two via an isolator outside. That then comes back 
Through these isolators, which are all yet to be labelled with the board, isolator for battery one, isolator for battery two, worst brand of isolators money can buy. And then that goes back into their respective grid DBs. So I have off-grid DB1, off-grid DB2. All right, so I hope that's been useful. If you've got any other questions or anything you'd like me to make a specific video on, please ping me below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.